the supreme commander of the revolutionaries and the fleet admiral. Two figures opposed in ideas and aims, but could they have shared a past? Hello, my Nakamatachi, this is Joy Girl back with the promised part 2 of the Monkey D Dragon series. And if you thought part 1 was a fun dip in the world of speculations, you're in for a treat because today we are diving deep. Deep into the wild speculating of this enigmatic character and his past. If you haven't yet watched part 1, the link is in the description box below. I will be referencing things I discussed in part 1 so I do recommend you go watch that discussion first and return to this video once you're caught up in the madness. And as with part 1, this video does not include any spoilers and as such, everyone is welcome to watch and join in on the discussion. With that being said, without further ado, let's begin. So as we postulated in part 1, Monkey D. Dragon may not be the Navy Admiral Garp's biological son and rather, is his son-in-law or maybe even his adopted son. Delving further into that possibility of Dragon being Garp's son-in-law, this then brings us to the discussion and a consideration of Luffy's mum. And if there's a character we know even less about than Dragon, then that is his wife or Luffy's biological mother. Much in the trend of practically non-existent mothers in the world of One Piece, for which there are a very few exceptions, Luffy's mother has not been shown nor even mentioned in the series. This lack of maternal figures does seem very intentional when we consider comments made by Oda in regards to this topic. Oda was asked about a description of Luffy's mother in an interview back in December 2009. The mangaka noted that she is most likely still alive, though this is something that he is still thinking about. He described her as a tough-looking, strict woman with a typical middle-aged woman's perm. Oda further went on to explain some of the other Straw Hats backstories in relation to their mothers, commenting that he wanted to show us that you can call someone who is not your birth relation, mother. And this comment, along with the description of Luffy's mother, has caused the community to assume that Oda was referring to Dadan, who raised Luffy and has fulfilled the maternal role in his upbringing. Furthermore, Oda's other comments in SBS Volume 78, as well as according to Luffy's voice actor, suggest a disinterest in exploring Luffy's mother. For Oda, mothers are the antithesis to adventure and as Luffy's adventure began when he left his mother, One Piece is focused on his story, not his mother's. On the other hand, in the Volume 44 SBS, when asked whether Oda would ever draw Luffy's parents, Oda hinted that he had already drawn his parents and that they would feature in Volume 45. Whilst this may have caused a frenzy of studying every minor background character in the hopes of finding Luffy's mom, we need to consider that the Japanese used by Oda may not have been saying parents in the plural form, referring to both his father and mother, and may have just been referring to one parent. In which case, Oda did indeed reveal Dragon to be Luffy's father in Volume 45. So all of these put together certainly suggest that we will not be seeing Luffy's mother in the series, or that we already have in the form of his adoptive mother, Dadan. And I don't dispute Dadan's case as Luffy's mom by any means. The scene between her and Garp following Ace's death has me in pieces every time. But what if Oda does have a further backstory brewing for Luffy's parentage in terms of Luffy's mum? Considering that Luffy is our main character, it does seem very likely we will be finding out more about his parents, especially considering what we know about his father. So bringing us back to Dragon, his role as the leader of the revolutionaries with a marine vice admiral father or father-in-law certainly raises questions as to how he is in the position he is in. And I think this could have a lot to do with Luffy's mother. Her existence doesn't have to take away from Luffy's adventure if her story is told in connection to Dragon, thereby not contradicting why Oda has chosen not to feature her earlier. Furthermore, if Garp is indeed Dragon's father-in-law, it's possible that Luffy's mother was also a marine. And if she was, this could even fit the description that Oda gave of her being a tough and strict woman. Perhaps Dragon was married with a marine woman and something happened to her, causing him to turn against the world government. And delving further into this possibility, it also brings another character into the discussion. And that is the current Fleet Admiral of the Navy, Sakazuki, who was commonly referred to as Akainu, the Red Dog during his time as one of the Marine Admirals. Now you might be wondering how we got here. Dragon has never shared an exchange with the Fleet Admiral to suggest that they share a history, and the only thing seemingly connecting them is the fact that they are ultimately direct enemies with Dragon being the leader of the revolutionaries and Sakazuki, the Fleet Admiral of the Marines. 
but there are some things we can take away from the series that could hint to a deeper connection between the two. First of all, they are presented as polar opposites. Dragon is the head of the revolutionaries, and Sakazuki is the fleet admiral of the marines. These positions are representative of their ideologies. Dragon seems very much focused on moral justice, whereas Sakazuki fervently upholds absolute justice, referring to the adherence to the laws of the world government. Furthermore, when Oda depicts Dragon, he seems to be representative of coldness, always cloaked and based in Baltigo, which seems to be a winter island. In direct contrast, Sakazuki is portrayed as hot, shown wearing Hawaiian shirts and having the magma devil fruit, the Magu Magu no Mi. And aside from these contrasts, there is more that seemingly connects these two characters. For one, Sakazuki ordered the destruction of Ohara's evacuation ship to ensure not even a single survivor of Ohara would exist. Dragon, on the other hand, took in the single surviving member from Ohara when Kuma sent Robin to Tequila Wolf, with the Straw Hat member rescued by the revolutionaries and going with them to train at Baltigo for two years. Dragon is interested in the knowledge of Ohara, whereas Sakazuki was hell-bent on destroying any trace of it. Perhaps there is something that Dragon is after that will help the revolutionaries' cause against the world government. But all of this supporting evidence so far could be simply attributed to the fact that these roles as leader of the revolutionaries and the marines, Dragon and Sakazuki by nature of their character are naturally directly opposed. However, is it possible there is a more personal connection between the two? For example, during the Marineford War, even after the appearance of Blackbeard, Sakazuki went after Luffy and seemingly prioritized eliminating the Straw Hat over everything else going on during the war. Always referring to Luffy as Dragon's son, was he so obsessed with stopping Luffy due to the threat he posed as the son of the world's worst criminal? Or was it personal? Similarly, Sakazuki and Garp don't seem to have the best relationship. Sakazuki seemingly holds respect for the former fleet admiral Sengoku, as seen in the interactions and Sakazuki's albeit grudging but nevertheless compliance with the former fleet admiral's orders, but Sakazuki does not share this respect for the hero of the marines. Now this could be attributed to the fact that Garp has a very laissez-faire attitude that seems to contradict the principles of absolute justice, and going even further, a disdain for the celestial dragons whom the navy are supposed to protect at all costs. But is this conflict spurred by deeper roots that have a more personal origin? Leading me to wonder about the possible connections. So let's bring Luffy's mother back into the equation. What if Luffy's mum also knew Sakazuki? What if Dragon, Sakazuki and Luffy's mother were all part of the marines together? This would have to be before Sakazuki rose to the rank of admiral, which is why Dragon's identity remains much of a mystery and was a shock to the rest of the marines. And if so, Maybe they were friends, and there are some points that could hint to this. Firstly, of all the differences and contrasts between Dragon and Sakazuki, they share a similarity, and that is their tattoo. If you remember back to part 1 of this discussion, I postulated on the significance of Dragon's tattoo that is on the left side of his face, linking him to the scars which are on the left sides of both Luffy and Garp. Now Sakazuki's face is clear of any scars or tattoos on the left side, and Sakazuki doesn't share the same face tattoo, but he does have a large tattoo that spans the left side of his upper body. Whilst his incorporates flowers, the design of his tattoo is quite similar to dragons in that they are somewhat tribal looking and of course, also on the left side of their bodies. Other things pointing to their shared connection is the fact that dragon and Sakazuki are exactly the same age, meaning that if they were in the marines together, they most likely would have been friends or rivals, or possibly both. Dragon's powers are not yet known, but from what we've seen of him, as in his introduction at Logetown, as well as the fact that his ship is named Wind Grandma, it has been widely speculated that he has a wind or otherwise weather-related devil fruit ability. And if this is the case, their devil fruits would work quite nicely together. In real life scenarios, the amount of gases in the wind or atmosphere can control the explosiveness of magma from a volcano. And similarly, weather changes such as rain can also affect volcanic movement. In this way, their devil fruit abilities are complementary, which sounds quite terrifying if the two indeed work together as a team. 
Maybe along with the possible marine mother of Luffy's, Dragon and Sakazuki all worked together, forming a close bond. Though the fleet admiral was commonly referred to as Akainu, his epithet during his time as an admiral, his name Sakazuki in Japanese is a ritual of exchanging sake cups in a pledge of loyalty. We have seen this ritual followed before by a young Luffy, Ace and Sabo. What if Sakazuki was also performed by Dragon and Sakazuki himself who became brothers in arms? Maybe it even included Luffy's mother, cementing their relationship. Maybe there was even a bit of love triangle going on. With the drawing of a young Sakazuki who looks very much similar to how he does now, a stern face and absolute devotion to the marine justice, I'm picturing a James slash Lily slash Snape type of connection. Where Sakazuki, the stern and serious boy, always loved Luffy's mother from afar, but Dragon was the one who held her heart. Romance barely exists in One Piece, but is that because Oda simply isn't interested? Or is he saving it for this big reveal? What if somewhere in their shared history, an event occurred resulting in the death or some other misfortune on Luffy's mother? Resulting in the two boys to split paths. Perhaps it even involved the Celestial Dragons, and this is what sparked both Dragon and Garp's hatred towards the nobles. While Sakazuki, maybe sour over a choice that Dragon and Luffy's mother made, decided to remain loyal to the navy. Going back to the tattoos briefly, we know from the special chapter 0, Strong World, a younger dragon present at Roger's execution did not have his face tattoo then. We don't know when Sakazuki joined the marines, but we know that he was a marine during the Ed War, whilst Roger was still alive, and we cannot see whether he has his tattoos back then. It is possible that Dragon was also a marine back then, and both of them didn't get their tattoos until after the incident with Luffy's mother, which would have then occurred less than 24 years ago. In saying that, we have seen a younger marine Sakazuki with his tattoos in the color spread for chapter 691, a poster for Film Z, but this depiction could still be of the marines following Roger's execution. So then, maybe following the incident involving Luffy's mom and the Celestial Dragons, both Dragon and Sakazuki got tattoos in remembrance of, or as a tribute to her placed and designed slightly differently to represent their unique relationship to the woman. Though I mentioned before that Sakazuki is loyal to the cause of the world government, including to the protection of celestial dragons, pointing out this contrast to other marines like Garp, that doesn't mean that he is one of their fervent fans. In fact, Sakazuki has been shown to mock the Gorosei as well as the CPO to be the celestial dragon's puppets. Perhaps if something involving the Ten Rubito did in fact harm Luffy's mother, this caused a dislike within Sakazuki as well, but due to his ideals of absolute justice or perhaps over stubbornness after blows with Dragon, Sakazuki could not bring himself to turn his back on the world government, resulting in his current attitudes and temperament. And this doesn't mean that Luffy's mother has to be dead. I mean, Oda did say that he thinks that she is still alive, that is, if he was referring to Luffy's biological mother and not thinking of Dadan at the time. But perhaps Luffy's mother also chose to leave the marines with Dragon, which may have felt like the ultimate betrayal for Sakazuki who became even more engrossed in the idea of absolute justice. The reason I say this is because in chapter 586, there is a figure who speaks to Dragon, but we only see their foot. Of what we do see, it seems like it is a woman based on the shoes which seems to be high-heeled, and it doesn't seem to fit the shoes of either Ivankov or of Koala, whom both wear high heels but in closed boot-like shoes. Sure, this one is much more of a reach, but why did Oda go to the extent of hiding this character if they were simply insignificant or a character we have been introduced to before? In saying that, there doesn't have to be a love story involved. Even if Dragon is Garp's true biological son, this conflict could still work just based on Dragon and Sakazuki alone, without Luffy's mother and simply be focused on their difference in ideals. It could even have to do with Kuzan, another former marine who vehemently disagrees with Sakazuki's ideals of absolute justice. The former admiral fought with Sakazuki in an intense 10-day battle to oppose his rise to fleet admiral, and further than opposing ideals, Kuzan seems to have been an admirer of Garp's, noting to Luffy that he owes Garp for a debt in the past. 
Perhaps Garp saved him from a battling dragon in Sakazuki. Think of something similar to Shank saving Kobe during Marineford. But again, this relationship between Dragon and Sakazuki may not include and does not need a third party to work. And yet, it does seem like this is likely when we consider Oda's seeming attachment to the number three. For example, we have the monster trio, the ASL sworn brothers, three admirals, and we even saw glimpses of Garp, Sengoku, and Suru in their younger marine days together. The fact remains that when we follow some of the crumbs left by Oda and connect the seemingly unrelated dots together, it seems there may be more than meets the eye when it comes to Dragon and Sakazuki. In my experience with One Piece, coincidences are few and far, and most things have a deeper meaning than they seem. So, enemies simply by virtue of their roles and positions? Or former brothers in arms with bad blood? And with that question, it does bring us to the end of this discussion. Please let me know what you think of this wild theory of the possible relationship between Dragon and Sakazuki by leaving a comment below. Please also like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.